Hello everyone, this is Counter Yellow, bringing you another video talking about Star Trek Online. And today I'm going to be talking about the ships in the Discovery Op Operations pack. Um, I have my own strong opinions about that pack. Um, in this video, I'm just going to talk about the raw stats themselves of the starships and the starship trait and console from each, each of those starships as well. Um, because I'm talking about basically two different starships in this video, I'm not going to have reasonable time to actually talk about the stats of them as you level through the game, because they are also leveling starships in the game. You can use them after you've completed the tutorial for any of, of the factions in, in the game. So I'm just going to be going over those specific ships themselves in, in the end game, and also why these ships are actually kind of cool. I'll have some random thoughts throughout the video as, as well. Feel free to see the time links for all that stuff inside this video if you don't want to watch the entire video yourself. So first off, we'll talk about the battle cruisers because this pack has both um, a battle cruiser for the Federation and KDF factions, as well as a pilot raider for for both factions. So battle cruisers are just cruisers with with two different changes. First off, you lose command and track fire to get um, the option to have dual heavy cannons for your starship. For for a vast majority of, of of the player base who are not tanks, this is a very significant upgrade. Um, and use bullet upgrade, be able to basically use any weapon in in the game, any generalist weapon in the game. And depending upon the upon the, the battle cruiser, it could be roughly the same uh, stats as as a regular cruiser, or it might be slightly lower for that extra offensive capability. Generally, um, for the consoles themselves, typically you have about four tactical consoles. That's what a standard battle cruiser will have. Some are a little bit lower because they have, have they have much higher base stats. And then there, there's there's a select few that have five tactical consoles on them. Miracle Warp Worker Starships are starships that have a Miracle Warp Worker Commander bridge officer seat that allows them to have the innovation mechanics, which is garbage. But because that's garbage, they, Cryptic also added the extra universal console on top of it to make it feel worthwhile. With our battle cruisers that, that, that we're, we're getting from, from the pack, I'm also going to be talking about the fleet versions because those fleet versions are just better than the Sea Star versions. But the fleet versions are earnable at Fleet Military Tier 2, which is really, really low. Um, it's, it's the same one that I've been saying for a while, that the um, the Fleet Advanced Light Cruiser is able to be earned out of well, and it's a very good ship. I, I really like, like it as for budget tanking. For budget DPS, I, I feel that a lot of your budget DPS builds, like on S2 of Reddit and such, the DPS League should probably be use, using these ships now for, for both factions. Just because you're able to earn this thing so 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 early on for even your, your younger fleets, and they're able to have five tactical consoles on, on the ships themselves. They're the, the, they are pretty solid. The, the KDF version additionally gets a Battle Cloak on top of it, which since Battle Cloaks are pretty rare to have for, for the KDF whenever it's not in a Bird of Prey, this is very significant. Um, this ship is probably one of the better ships in the game now from, from the fleet now. Just going to throw that out there. Now, when it comes to Raiders, um, for those of you that, that, that don't recall from the Vulcan to Pal video, um, Raiders are just, just escorts to have one less weapon, have lower hull and shields, and to compensate for that, they get a Raider flanking bonus. Which is an extra like eight percent in PvP and twenty five percent in PVE, or like eleven percent in PvP and like thirty three percent in PVE. They typically have a, a commander tactical bridge officer seat with universal bridge officer seats for the rest of them. And pilot escorts, I, I typically just have a a commander pilot seat with, with a pilot maneuver special ability thing to add on top of it. Our discovery ships are a combination of both of these. The Strand Light Escort is a Raider. That is what this ship is. I don't know why they didn't just call it a Raider. They want to call it a Light Escort for some reason. It's a Raider, guys. This is a Raider. As thus, it's got one less weapon. Four weapons in the front with two in the back plus the experimental, so seven weapons in total. With five tactical, three engineering, and three science, which is pretty typical for um, a, a lot of Raid Raiders in the game, which will have cans of pilot maneuvers. The Bird of Prey is what the KDF call a Raider, which is basically just a Raider, but it also has a Battle Cloak. 
All, all, all birds of prey have, have, have battle cloaks. Same thing with, with the stats, but yeah, it's just how we're going in, in this video. As, as for some initial thoughts before I get into things in this, in case you know you all want to stop after, after seeing this, one of the big improvements that they did with, with the sea store ships is they made them as well leveling starter ships so that there was actually a reason to buy them beyond the trait and console that the sea store ships give, give you. Um, as, as I said before, I'm not interested in really showing these stats because I'm already covering two ships in, in this video. If you need me to cover the, that, I definitely can in a separate video, but I, I don't feel that it's, it's really needed for, for these starships today. Now, right now, the, at least the battle cruisers are potentially the best DPS starships for free to play players or earnable ships at the moment. Having five tactical consoles at a tier two military is very significant. And of course, the KDA versions have a battle cloak. There are very few battle cruisers with, with a battle cloak on them. Most of them just have a cloak or they, they don't have anything at all. It also means our, our promotion pack um, battle cruiser D7 is also less less appealing now th th than it used to be, and I will get to that later. The big cons is KDF and Federation versions have the exact same stats, which is really boring to be honest. The old Fleet Europa is basically entirely worthless now. The Fleet Europa has to wait until tier 5 military, and its stats are pretty garbage compared to our battle cruisers here. And the Fleet Europa was also a battle cruiser. I, I see it as tier 7 starships are probably close on, on, the, on the horizon. I'm just throwing that out there. I definitely see within the next year and a half for tier 7 starships to be released inside the game. With their extreme... Ooh, what's a good way to put it? Basically, with these new, new starships recently, they're basically saying that they don't care about... How having the old ships in, in the game still comparable and worthwhile to use statistically. Basically now, besides the trait and the console of a lot of ships, you shouldn't be using the old ships anymore in, inside the game. Which is really pushing for, you should, buy the, you should buy the new stuff and ignore the old stuff altogether. Which is really... it's That's a really slippery slope for a development team. But anyway, um, I'll try to stop being ne negative in, in, in this video. Um, well, first off, with our Val Cruisers um, inside of this, this is probably the coolest looking ship of them. But anyway, um, we have our Federation version, the Gagarin. Whenever you look, look at them versus the other American War Worker ships in, in the game, it, it, it's, a, it's much lower in terms of its stats. The Val War Juggernaut was, was supposed to be really, really close to what the American War Worker ships were. Um, from from the sea store, just supposed to be a very off offensive version of the, of those ships with six tackle consoles in, in total as as a potential. The Juggernaut lost its um, cruiser companions for the Juggernaut array, which if you're doing a Polaron build, then it's 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 some nice additional DPS. Otherwise, it's just a clicking that does some damage. Um, I really see the Gagarin as basically just a budget version of the Valwar ju Juggernaut. It's, it's really just how, how I see it. Because it's also a 5.3. It's also got inertia and impulse that's comparable to it, and its console stuff is similar. Except this console looks a little more similar to the, the other ones in the game, but yeah, whatever. It still is able to have five tackle consoles, so it's, it's, it's still a pretty nice ship overall. And then versus the KDF version, KDF Miracle Worker Cruiser has a little bit higher stats. So you just you can see here, the same holes, just a little bit lower shields. Um, and then for our our, our, our fleet Irma one from our ac actual pack kind of, well really from the fleet, the difference is just that it has, has a battle cloak on, on top of the awesome stuff that it already has. I really ho hope that they change their mind and they allow us to have like a D7 or D9 look to this as well, but that seems pretty doubtful. You you would have to be willing to have your starship look like this to, in order to fly a, th th this really nice statted um, battle cruiser in, inside the game. Still, objectively, in almost every way, 
the Valbar Juggernaut is, is much better than this ship, but the ship is also much cheaper to obtain inside the game too. So, and it also has, has, a, has, a, has a battle cloak for, for the KDF. So, pretty nice. And, and, for, and for the rest of these, for the battle cruisers, I'm for the most part going to be used in the KDF version just because the KDF one has a battle cloak and the Federation one doesn't. And the stats are the exact same, so I feel that this is the best way to look at them. In terms of other ones that have been popular in the past, Fleet Europa um, was popular in the past. Yes, it has higher hull and shields. Most people in the game are basically going to say that lower hull and lower shields to have two extra um, tactical consoles is more than worth it. So I don't really see many people really wanting to use the Europa besides people that have already gotten the Europa in the past. Um, if you want something with already consoles on it from the sea store from the same price, the Martok Tactical Battle Cruiser, which is from the tier six um, flagship bundles for the, for the KDF, this one um, has five tackle consoles built into its actual ship itself, which is really nice. It's basically just a much better version of the Europa, except it's it's, it's a four four configuration. But I really think that it's pretty powerful, especially with the consoles that you're able to put on top of it. Um, the negative heavy battle cruiser, in my opinion, was was the battle cruiser that was the basis for the fleet Europa. A lot of stats are pretty similar, um, but it's, it's a 4-4 instead of, of a 5-3. The advanced light battle cruiser um, for the KDF is basically just the um, fleet version of the Federation tier 6 advanced light cruiser so the tier 6 miranda class but but for for the kdf it was basically just about the same stats but you you have a cloak now and you don't have the um japan strike fire ability on on the ship in terms of raw stats it's actually pretty similar in terms of its base stats um but still it's it's a loss for the Universal Console. Keep in, mind, keep in mind, though, that both of these ships, both the Fleet T6 Kug and Fleet T6 Kempu, um, are available at Fleet Tier 2 military. So, if we're supposed to do raw, raw comparisons in terms of the Fleet military, these are supposedly um, the same level of Starship. So... I, I, I don't believe that's the case anymore, but that's in theory the way that it is inside the game. Now for the tank option for battle cruisers, these are the are the probably the best ones to go for because these are the only cruisers to my understanding. I'm I'm, I'm probably wrong on this, and there's probably ones I'm, I'm over overlooking, but these cruisers have command attract fire alongside the ability to have dual heavy cannons on them, which is pretty big. I mean, it is pretty big. Unfortunately, there are a lot of pros and cons and costs to the stuff available to you. To have four tactical consoles, you're, you aren't able to have a Lieutenant Commander Science um, seat for these command, command battle cruisers, or you have, or if you have, you know, like, like a five-three-three ship um, with five engineering, three science, three tactical. But I mean, like we look at the Rahuls and shields of this one, they are very, very close to um, to this one. So it is an interesting look looking at some of that stuff here. When we look, we look at some of the basic looking ones in the game. When I, when I initially thought about this, I might have typed this in wrong. But um, the fleeing close Intel Bad Cruiser has a cloak on it. And it's about cruiser command thing. It's 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 got your in, intelligence abilities, which which I think are kind of the weirder ones in the game, but it's there none nonetheless. Pretty similar in stats here from the base stats, um, as well as its actual seating too are pretty similar. You're you're still at a loss for one less tactical console, but that's kind of a given with with the Merc Worker ship. The not cool um, actually is super comparable actually. Um, it's, it's a little bit lower hull uh, for a much higher turn rate with, with its, its battle cloak, and it still is able to have dual heavy cannons at battle cruiser commands. 
basically the way that I personally see it as the Thunder Cruel Battle Cruiser is basically like what if I was going to have a very standard cruiser that had a battle cloak on it? That's basically what would you get with, with the, the uh, cool battle cruiser. It, its stats aren't spectacular, but but they are standard for for a basic cruiser in, in, inside the game. And it's got a battle cloak and dual hefty cannons. When it comes to the battle cloaks, these are, in my opinion, probably the best ones for, for the KDF. The, the fleet kib um, had a battle cloak as well, but dual heavy cannons. It had only offensive cruiser commands, so it, it didn't have the shield one nor a command track fire, but it had had the other two ones. Um, it's it's only a four four ship though, so you have that downside to it. But uh, other than that, its seating is actually very very similar to stats similar in terms of iner inertia and impulse as well. And of course, we have the D seven. This is from the promotion pack. Uh, so this is one of the one of the billing credit starships. I see this starship actually going down in price due to the fact that as long as you can work around these these the um, slow return rate of the, this ship versus the temporal battle cruiser, honestly, the fleet battle cruiser is is a bit stronger than the D7 now. Now, it's true that you have Temporal Operative plus Intelligence, so you could argue that the bridge I've seen is still nice and pretty strong, but it's a pretty hard argument, honestly. Especially with the Yuga Yuga 5 seats over here. This is, this is a pretty strong ship. These are just two weird ones. I, I, I figure that, that a lot of people are gonna, would get mad if I didn't include these, these two guys. The Zenkethi battle cruiser is basically a battle cruiser that has really high shields, like a science vessel, um, and, and a still five three with really slow Im impulse. So it's, it's one of the slower battle cruisers inside the game. But it does have a Lutheran Luth Commander Universal Miracle Worker, which is interesting on the ship itself. The, the Sona is basically just a, a bit more maneuverable uh, battle cruiser that has a little bit higher shields for a standard hull. Other than that, these two are pretty standard and not really the most spectacular ships inside the game. Uh, ones that are a little bit better, but still not as great as this one are these two other fleet ships inside the game. The fleet Moog um, has similar stats as well with a 5-3. It's got a Lieutenant Commander Tactical Intel, which is really nice. Intelligence is just pretty nice for, for DPS. Um, still only four tactical consoles. The fleet were for all support battle cruiser. Stats are pretty similar as well. Sadly, this one's a tier three military instead of tier two. This one's pretty higher. It's much higher as well. And both of them only have cloaks, so you have that downside too. Now, obviously, if I didn't mention the fleet arbiter, I would get a lot of writing in, in the comments for sure. Fleet Arbiter for a very long time has been a very big standard for the DPS crowd. First off, the Sea Store version of, of the Arbiter um, has the has the Starship trait Emergency Weapon Cycle, which has basically been a staple for the DPS crowd since its release. And its fleet version is is a very nice sh ship overall too. Basically, what it comes down to between these two ships is as long as you're okay losing your Lieutenant Commander Tactical Intelligence seat for a Universal Tactical Console, this ship is just an, is, is almost an upgraded version of, of the Arbiter. Its stats are very similar and, and pretty nice overall. And honestly, in my objective, well, in my subjective opinion, this ship looks cooler too. The Paladin is another battle cruiser released a little bit later. Uh, some people use it, use it. I still think the Arbiter and this ship are both way better in their own ways. Now we get to the second part of the video with our pilot raiders. Uh, the Fleet Shran light pilot, it should be raider, but they call it an escort. 
Um, its hull and shields are kind of reversed from what you would expect it to really be. Um, the Mercury class pilot escort has an almost 0.1 hull and shields. So the higher hull, lower shields for, for this guy. Because it's a raider, you lose one weapon slot. As I said before, with, with raiders versus regular escorts. Its impulse inertia is, is very, very similar to a regular pilot escort, though. And it's a lieutenant commander tactical pilot. And because it's it's a raider instead of a regular escort, it's got universal slots for for the rest of, of its seating. So it's it's very flexible. Um, when it comes to our two pilot escorts that are have available, there's two different pilot escort packs. There was the original, which 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 is some of the, which are arguably the fastest ships in the game. Technically, the Rising Corvette is faster with, a, with an impulse base rating of 0 0.25 instead of 2.4. But outside of the Rising Corvette, these pilot escorts are the fastest ships in, in the game right now. The Andorian escorts are a bit slower. They have some really weird stats or weird star search rates on them. One of them was um, improved gravity wall, which is, which is why I, I, I got one of the, the ships. I, I, it's, it's, it's not this one, though. It was, it, it was, it was a more sciencey one. But anyway, um, when we compare these to the KDF versions, obviously the KDF version of this pilot escort has the exact same stats because Cryptic has gotten very boring in, in their stats in the past few years. Same thing with this ship, it's the same stats as the Federation version, except it's, it's got a battle cloak on, on top of it. And um, yeah, for this ship, it's actually its actual stats compared to the pilot Raptor are actually super, super close. Slightly lower shields overall. As I said, Bird of Prey and Raiders should have slightly lower stats versus an Escort or a Raptor. Raptors are just the KDF version of, 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 of Escorts. So that it, so it has its Raider flanking bonus as a kind of like an opportunity cost thing. When I actually look at the stuff here, it's actually pretty solid in its overall seating versus our honorable one here. Um... Yeah, I, I'm not really a fan of Escorts or Raiders, so I can't really say it too much as, as to what stuff is really the most powerful here. What I will say, though, when you look at the raw stats here of the Urnbull ship versus the two from, from the Sea Store, I personally like the Sea Store versions quite a bit more. The Urnbull Assemble Raiders gets Molecular re Reconstruction versus Pilot Maneuvers, which I, thought, which I like a little bit more. Um, thank you all, um, by the way, last time for telling me that this is a 4-2 ship instead of 5-1. I have corrected that for this video. There's probably a lot more mis mistakes in this video for other, other ships. Feel free to, to just, just say in the comments what, what stuff is, is, is wrong so that everyone who's watched this, this video doesn't get some misconceptions and, and buys a ship because of some of the stats that I put in here that were accident, accidentally wrong. Gemini Vanguard Raider has lower impulse because it's got Vanguard Wingman to help supplement its DPS and or survivability. And of course, for the ones from the exchange, because if someone had some passionate stuff inside the comments, I, I replaced one of the ships here with the Maquis Raider. Um, but alongside that is the Kellen Timeline um, Pilot Bird of Prey. If, if you're wanting a pilot ship with five weapons in, in the front, and wants to be a bird of prey, this is the only way to really get one of those because our our ship here only has four in, in the front. And as I said, the Shran Escort and the uh, the other bird of prey have the exact same stats. Otherwise, besides that, the other ship has a battle cloak too. The Monkey Raider is unique in that it's got a universal security for a console because it's a Merc worker ship. So it's a six tactical console raider in, in, inside the game. I don't feel like that's particularly needed for a raider, simply just because raiders are most effective in PvP, which there, a lot of your consoles are dedicated towards your survival versus more DPS, so I'm, I, I don't feel this is particularly nice, but hey, if you really want to play a raider in a PvE environment, this will add more damage to your build. 
Then on cool to um, Raider and Fleet Burrow, Border Prey are some other Raiders inside the game. Unfortunately, at least when I was looking, this is the only Bird of Prey that I could find. Um, that is a that that's at the Fleet Tier Six level. It, it, it's kind of unfortunate that that's kind of the way it is, but I guess it's really just because only like a third of, of the player base play KDF, so it's a lot less ships to really work with. Again, um, back in the olden days with Raiders and Bird of Prey. One of the things that they used to do was was they took out a fifth console slot or fifth um, bridge officer slot, additionally with the raider flanking. Nowadays they've added that that ensign slot back in, but that wasn't the case back in the olden days in Star Trek Online. So these these are from that old time inside the game, which is why it doesn't have um, the fifth bridge officer slot for for these ships. Now, for closing thoughts for this video, um, with, with the trading console for for these ships, um, for for the Discovery Battle Cruisers, again, the, the for the post it clearly says that the C, the Caesar one scales. It also implies that the Fleet one also scales, but it doesn't give stats for those ones, so I I can't really fully confirm that that's the case. But the, the implication is that the Fleet tier six ones can, can be accessed at a much lower rank the trait from the discovery battle cruisers is called entwined tactical matrices from its description basically whenever you use fire at, at will it, it automatically gives a, a torpedo spread to your ship and whenever you use torpedo spread it automatically gives fire at will to your ship this is i this is supposed to be a, ideal for builds that, that that use beams as well as torpedoes the way that I see this tray is that it's basically the fire at will extender for DPS builds. So, for those of you that don't know, um, in the standard tank meta and anyway, um, you'll use beams and you'll use um, a, a particular um, trait um, called redirection arrays, which is from one of the Miracle Worker, Worker Cruisers um, inside the game. And what that trait does is that it extends your fire at will based upon hits that hits that are coming into your ship. So if you're a DPS captain, that, that trait is completely worthless. If you're a tank captain and you, you use beams, it's extremely useful for extending your fire at, at, at will duration. For it to, for duration to be almost as long as, as, as what it would be for it to come back up again. I, I see this trait as basically... The DPS replacement for redirection arrays for everyone who is not a tank captain inside the game and wants to use use beams. It's actually a decent trait. Um, I, I don't feel like you need to put a, a torpedo on your ship. You can easily just just put a torpedo spread ability on your ship. Of course, you can also argue at the same time that why do that when you can you can just use two fire at, at, at will traits and do it that way. In, in, in which with that argument. You could, you could just say that this enhances torpedoes spread builds a little bit more or or what it could also do is it um, allows you to have torpedo spread on your build with with a lot, a lot of torpedo high yield and using fire will as your method of putting torpedo spread on on, on your ship as well that I, I could definitely see especially with torpedo cool out times for ships that so this could also be a way around all all that too as for the console refracting energy shunt, this seems more like a PvP thing because it's it's protonic damage. So proton damage is really useful to counter a, a certain device um, that you get from a mission called Spectres, which is a mission that is off, often bugged if you try to repeat it now because it's not from the regular mission journal in, in, anymore. So if, if you actually play the Spectres arc, Make sure you make sure that you get to get that device first, and then it, then if you want, want to re replay the mission again later, and you're, and you're actually able to, then go ahead and and select the cooled round shields. As for the, the discovery raiders, um, again same thing with the sea store thing, the trade strike from the shadows. For my subscription, it gives a placate thing whatever, but the bigger thing is that it gives you higher DPS if enemies are not attacking you. The way that I'm reading this is that it basically is saying if you're a DPS captain and you team up with a tank captain 
and put this trait on your ship, you're going to have significantly higher DPS during your runs. Basically what this is saying is, hey DPS players, it's actually advantageous from a DPS perspective to have a tank with you in your group. Not only will it add yours to better survivability, but actually will increase your overall DPS for having that, that tank with you. I don't know if this is going to if this is actually going to be a best in slot trait, it definitely could be in the right team compositions. In a lot of your generalist pug PVE DPS runs, it's not going to be, but I definitely could see this trait actually getting in, into your high end DPS um, builds. Depending upon like, like, uh, depending upon pre made groups and such. It's console graviton displacer. It's kind of the same thing for DPS people. It's a gravity wall that drops aggro. Most of the time with, with control abilities, it it draws a lot of aggro towards you. Um, but a lot of times you still want a gravity wall so that it's easier to know to hit a lot of enemies really easily with, with like cannon, rapid fire, and, and cannon uh, scatter volley. With this, now you, you can basically have a gravity wall without investing a lot into science um, abilities and you're still able to have those really fancy stuff in, in in your build as well overall for a lot for a lot of the stuff here it's geared towards dps captains most, most definitely i mean a vast majority of the player base is um a dps play style but the one thing that i do like from this in terms of the traits and consoles is that this trait here can potentially help promote tank captains inside the game But yeah, um, that's basically it for, for this video. Feel free to like and, and subscribe if you do. I will be releasing at least one, possibly two more videos later on this week, giving my own strong opinions about the Discovery Operations Pack, when I'm hopefully a little bit more level-headed to talk about it. Um, but yeah, um, ho hopefully I'll like some of the stack comparisons in, in this video and my opinions about the traits and consoles themselves. Thank you all for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.